There's a guru in almost every area of human interest, offering enlightenment to those who want it. Even the life of the spirit is not exempt from the pursuit of self-improvement. Books purporting to give easy enlightenment for only the cost of a volume fill the shelves. Most of them are simple-minded. Some are downright harmful. There's a paradox in our age's pursuit of self-improvement. We're looking for easy success. If I read the right book, find the right physical or psychic trainer, attend the right seminar, watch the right video, or meet the right person, I will be enlightened. I need not make too much effort myself. The reading or the encounter should suffice. Lots of people watch exercise videos instead of taking a walk. And yet, I'm not totally irresponsible. I really want to improve myself. I really want to be perfectly fit physically, emotionally, spiritually, socially, and financially. I just want it to happen instantly with a minimum of effort. I want to improve my life, but preferably without changing it. The man who ran up to Jesus may have jogged out of our own time. He wanted to improve himself. Good teacher, what must I do to share in everlasting life? Perhaps Jesus had been recommended by whatever was the first century equivalent of daytime television. So, possibly to reassure himself that he had really found the right guru, he called Jesus good. Jesus told him to not overdo it, to keep a sense of perspective. Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. Then Jesus told the man the way to live perfectly, the commandments of God. Now the man was very earnest, so he could honestly say, Teacher, I have observed all these since my childhood. So the Lord gave him a bit more advice, the absolutely foolproof way the man thought he was looking for. There's one more thing you must do. The man's eyes went wide. His head moved forward so that he would not miss a word of wisdom. Go and sell what you have and give to the poor. You will then have treasure in heaven. After that, come and follow me. At these words, the man's face fell. The man earnestly sought the answer, so Jesus gave it to him, inviting him to live without assurance, without guarantees. He told the man to give up all that he depended upon and start wandering the road to who knows where. That was more than the man was willing to do. The difficulty was that he wanted assurances. He called Jesus good in order to assure himself that he had made the right choice. However, the world offers no guarantees. Jesus challenged him to live in the real world, to give up all that might allow him to avoid the truth that there is no easy way to share in everlasting life. And everlasting life is what we all really want. All our other searches are symptoms of that desire. So the man went off, probably in search of someone who would give him more palatable advice. I too desire everlasting life. I too fear living the kind of life that leads to it. I'm like the disciples who were completely overwhelmed at this and exclaimed to one another, then who can be saved? No matter how earnestly I desire it, I cannot bring myself to do what is necessary to achieve salvation. For mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. God will provide what I need. I must be willing to accept what I'm offered. The man in today's gospel could not. Can I?